Hi, I'm Krista with Playing With a Purpose. Today I wanted to share with you a couple of ideas I have for my gardening theme. When I decide to talk about seeds with the children, the best way for me to get the children's attention is to actually show them real seeds and where they come from. The first thing I do is I bring down a pepper, an apple, and an avocado. Next, I ask the children where seeds come from. Then I cut into each one of these. We predict what we're going to find when we cut into each piece of fruit. So once I cut it open, we look up close and the children observe what's inside. We notice the seeds that are inside the apple. We count the seeds that are inside the apple. We talk about the color of the seed. We talk about the size of the seed. And then we open the next piece of fruit or vegetable. I ask them to point out the seeds to me. The children are always surprised to see how many seeds are inside a pepper. And we take some out, we talk about the color and the size of the seeds. And the last one I like to do is the avocado. And they are so surprised to see how big the avocado seed is. I give the children a chance to hold the seed, talk about its size and its color. After we're finished discussing the seeds, I like to read The Tiny Seed by Eric Carle. It's a great story about the life cycle of a seed and how a seed turns into a plant. I like to follow this up with a process art. So I first have the children finger paint all together. To make green, I like to use blue and yellow. This gives the children an opportunity to remember when we were studying colors and how the three primary colors make new colors. So the children use blue and yellow to make green and then we let it dry. And then the same is true to make the orange. We make the orange by using red and yellow. If you have older students, I like to give a strip of the paper with the shapes on it and have the children cut them out themselves. This is a great scissor cutting skill for the children. My children are just learning how to cut and they are not quite at this stage yet. So I've already gone ahead and cut out some petals, some leaves, a stem, and then a circle for the middle and I, I just like to write the story's name, the tiny seed. I love this project because it can reinforce color theory. The children learn the concepts that seeds turn into plants. It's a great opportunity to talk about the parts of a plant so we can talk about the stem, the leaf, the petals. So this is a great project to do with young students when you're teaching them early math concepts such as counting and the children how many leaves they have on their flower or how many petals do they have on their flower. You can teach one-to-one -one correspondence by counting with them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I love that this project allows the children to use their own creativity and they can make decisions about how many leaves they might want or how many petals they might want. And at the end of the project, all of the flowers should look different. The next idea I have is observing seeds and then writing down what we see in our journals. So I have these little containers at my science center right now. These are carrot seeds and you can see how tiny they are. These ones are sunflower seeds and the last ones are beans. So when we're talking about the seeds we notice how tiny the little carrot seeds are and we notice that the beans are much bigger and we talk about the color 
and we notice that the sunflower seeds have little stripes on them. Next I take out my journal and I talk to the children as I draw. Like, I'm gonna make some carrot seeds. Oh, those carrot seeds were tiny. And I'll ask the children, what did the beans look like? What, hmm, what color were those beans? And then I draw the beans. Oh, those sunflower seeds, they had a stripe in them. So it just gives an opportunity for me to talk about what I'm drawing in front of the children and then they understand that the words and the pictures that I have on my paper have meaning. I gave the children an opportunity to draw their seeds and you can see that they made little dots on their paper. This little guy was super excited and he kept saying, I made it, I made it. He was very excited that he had made some seeds. The next day, we talked about how the seeds need sun and rain. And so I drew a sun and I drew some rain. They were familiar with this because we just finished up a unit on weather. And here is their sun and rain. A few minutes later, one of my little girls was over in the writing center and I had a little ring in the writing center with different um, vocabulary words and pictures um, about our gardening theme. And she ran right over and said, look, rain. I get super excited when children make connections and are enthusiastic about their learning. The last activity goes along with this story. This story is called Planting a Rainbow. In the fall, we buy some bulbs and plant them in the ground. We order seeds from catalogs and wait all winter long for spring to warm the soil and sprout the bulbs. So you can po point to the bulbs in the ground. This is a great opportunity to teach the difference between bulbs and seeds. Then it's time to go to the garden center to select some seedlings. We sow the seeds and set out the plants in soil and watch the rainbow grow and grow and grow. We have some red flowers and orange flowers and some yellow blooms. We grow something green and some blue flowers and some purple flowers too. All summer long we pick them and bring them home. And when summer is over, we know we can grow our rainbow again next year. So what I love to do after we read this story is set out this activity as one of our tabletop activities. I've laminated some colored rainbow colored squares and set them out. And I provide them a basket of flowers that they can pick out a flower from the basket and match to the colored square. This is a super simple color matching activity for your garden theme. I'm Krista with Playing With Her Purpose. I'll see you next time.